Hi guys, uh, this is the Stop Eject People's Choice Award um, and so to say a massive thank you for helping us finish this project. Uh, we're going to ask some quest answer some questions that you've sent in uh, using this handy bag of questions. Right, so first question. Okay. I might need help reading it because I'm dyslexic. Right, everyone, that's all of us. What motivated your decision to take the role you're playing? From Thomas McFadden. Hi Thomas. Good question. Hello. Hello. You can go first because you've got a question. What motivated me to take uh, your decision to take the role and play? The role was originally they were looking for an 80 year old man, so <laughs> it was quite a challenge. And uh, I've worked with I've worked with Neil before, and uh, the director, and I really like his work. So I knew it would be a really a great experience. Uh, the producer Sophie Black. Uh, got in touch with me and as soon as I read the script I really really wanted to do it and I remember rearranging this lots of teaching that I had planned that weekend um, but it was just a really really good script and Neil's work um, was amazing and they'd sent me clips of that. After I read the script I fell in love with the character Dan he really was the perfect boyfriend and the perfect man and there's no way I would turn that kind of a character down so it was a very easy choice for me. Peg, it's like Scrabble or After something. You. Okay. Ready. I'll keep these. Number two. <clears throat> For me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer the theatre, stage or the film set? And can we expect to see you in any other film or television productions in the future? Uh, from Crystal Armitage, thank you. Uh, I prefer the film set, um, but I love theatre too, particularly Shakespeare. I, I did my degree in Shakespeare. But there's nothing like a film set. There's 200 people all working together on one project um, and it's this great communal atmosphere and I really like that you get to do it again if it goes wrong um, and that you're working something on, on a character and, and a project over a long period of time whereas with theatre you just get that one performance and every performance is different um, so it's almost like you just get that one shot each night um, and can you expect to see me in anything soon? I hope so <laughs> it's very hard to find work <laughs> as an actor um, I'm in a horror film called Tag that should be hopefully in cinemas next year we'll see um, and other than that, we'll have to see. Uh, what about there you weren't two hundred people involved in this. Not in this particular one, no. Maybe but sometimes, 20. <laughs> even when there's twenty people, if they're yeah. nice, it's cool. I don't want to lose them. Oh, is it my turn, right? Yes. Okay. Ooh, pick one. Pick one. Not me, not me. Oh, brilliant! It is me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it's from Crystal Armitage again. Hey. Is there anything specific that you do to get into character before and while shooting? Oh, wow. Um, for the perfect boyfriend. For the perfect boyfriend. That doesn't mean I'm the perfect boyfriend. Dan is great. He's very well written. What I do beforehand, I, um, I use music a lot to get into character. So I found very early on a song that was very Dan. And I listened to that a lot. Especially before takes, I'd listen to that. And it would really put me in the mindset of being Dan. And the rest are all secrets. <laughs> You're up next. <laughs> right, here we go. Everybody, this is Thomas McFadden again. Hello. Uh, did anybody... Oh, sorry, I really am dyslexic. Did anything memorable or funny happen on the set? Every day. Yes, particularly in the weir. Oh, on wow. The final day. Yes. Which, which didn't end up in the final film. Thanks, no. director, for putting us through that. <sighs> Anything funny? Every, it was a any good second, laugh. Any second with, yeah. with Therese on set is hilarious. Oh, thank you. Um, that, I mean, yeah. I thought it was quite funny when we had the red light outside and Sophie and Laura were stood outside by a red light. And, of course, every time a car went past, they peeped because it just looked a bit odd. Because they were filming. I thought that was very funny. Did the cars think they were police? No. Oh, no, they thought something else was going on. <laughs> I think they thought something quite rude. I don't know what they thought. And uh, I always think it's really funny when Neil kind of says action, but people are so thinking about what they're going to do that they, they don't move. That always makes me laugh, because <laughs> they don't know to go. So they're just like that. And everyone's waiting for them to move. It's a... Uh, it's, uh quite a romantic story with um, with a lot of sad moments so it's difficult to find hilarity on set 
but in downtime it's just non-stop fun yeah it really it is. is unless you're sitting there trying to make yourself cry um and you know off in the corner by yourself <laughs> so but some of it was really fun when i, when I was doing the fun scenes <laughs> I think you need a good laugh, don't you? If, you, yeah. if it's a very sad film, it's really important that everybody has a really good laugh mm. when you're not filming. Definitely. OK, Therese, you yes. took a break from acting to concentrate on writing. What do you enjoy writing about in terms of genre? And what mediums do you like to write for? And that's from Carl. From Carl? Mm-hmm. Oh, I wonder if it's a Carl I know. Uh, I'm, I'm really, really severely dyslexic, so I, I use a voice activator. Uh, and so I, I hate the physical act of spelling, but I love good stories and I, I mainly work for a company in Portugal. Uh, and I, I like meeting people in pubs or supermarkets and hearing their stories and then turning those stories into something that people will enjoy theatrically. And then those people come and see see the play and and i just i find that wonderful i love that when you give somebody back their story and they're they're moved by it so uh, i i uh, like any anything that i'm paid to write i really <laughs> like but i also do a lot of health videos as well so that yeah that's that right i like this it feels like christmas want and this one's to everyone have any of you ever wondered about travelling back in time and changing a part of your own lives? And that's from Thomas McFadden. <coughs> changing a part of your own life. Oh, yeah. What yeah? Is. <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because it was a bad thing I did as a mother. But there is some. there was something I did as a mother. My kids are still alive, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> They're now 20. And, and and 18. Crazy, but but uh, there is one decision I made as a mother that I really regret. I'm sure every mother is exactly the same. And if ever I mention it to my daughter, she goes, oh, I wish you wouldn't go on about that. But I think we've all, all done something to somebody else. Do you know, do you, we've yeah. all done something that's upset somebody that, that we wish we could go back and change. Is it go back and change or go back and relive, like in the film? Go back and change. Go oh, back and yeah. change. For yeah. me, it would be anything that I'd done to offend or upset anybody. So I'd be really busy. Yeah. Do you know what? What? What if? Sorry to change your question. What if? If it would to alter who you are today, would you change anything? No. If changing it would alter it, or yeah. if, or is if it, you could is go back totally to change something, question. but then you had to then relive the rest of your life, would you do it? Yeah, I think so. There's a couple of things. A bit like tweets. A couple of things. A couple of people I wouldn't have hurt all things I might not have said. But um, are you a better person for knowing you did a bad thing to those people? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, but I'm sure I do other so. bad things. <laughs> it's turned, it's the turned list into Oprah. Yeah. You sure what, 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 what? I you... couldn't do it. I think if it changed who I was now, not I'm not saying I'm 100% happy with who I am now, but I don't know, if it risks changing who I am now, then I, I would be scared to That's do true. it because other things would change too. Yeah, and you don't know the consequences. And you'd miss the good things. Although I wouldn't have done but that. I do think there's a place for um, you know it's it's so fashionable to say no regrets, no regrets, and yeah. I, I have a couple. You have to learn yeah. by. Oh, your definitely, regrets. yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. Who mm -hmm. said My that favorite one? Question. That was Thomas McFadden. Thomas, are you doing good questions, mm -hmm. man? Right. Uh, it's you know. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's like being back at school. I regret not learning to read and write. Right, Therese. Uh, if you really owned an antique shop, what would you, what would your prized possession be? Yeah. If you really owned an antique, what would your prized possession be? When I um, what, it from? Uh, it, it's from Crystal Armitage. Good question. I would love to own an antique shop, and my prized possession would be, which I have, which is antique. Is oh this is a bit, a bit miserable. When my nan died, <laughs> when my nan died, uh, she had a wind-up music bottle. It was a bottle, and in the middle was a little ballerina, and you wound it up and you put it down, and it danced round like that. And uh, when I died, I went to a house, and she'd written on the bottom there that this oh. is for Therese, and so that would be my prized possession because just the sounds are very evocative, aren't they? So that that I think would be my prized possession just because it's so yeah. it's a nice connection with the past isn't it and of course my children 
Oh, they're not antiques. I can't sell them. I suddenly <laughs> bought. Can't. I suddenly bought. Oh no, something else I regretted. <laughs> right now, my lovely children. <laughs> I love my children. Right, that's brilliant. Pass the bag. Oh, piece of you. Okay. Oh, oh, cheating. There we go. Oliver, you have a lot of film credits to your name. Mm -hmm. Do you have a particular preference for working in film? And if so, what is it about this media in particular that attracts you? And that's wow. from Carl. Okay. Um, Carl. Ah, well, Carl. the thing is, there's a there's a very short answer to that, which um, which is. I was always told that on stage you act with your body and your voice and in film you act with your eyes and that's what I love doing. That Unfortunately it's a very answer. short answer. I Yeah, I, I kind of got into film by mistake. I started in stage and I loved it and then my sister bumped into an old school friend who was at that time a screenwriter and she said, oh you're doing a film, give my brother an audition. He said yes, I went along to the audition and I, I landed one of the lead roles. And from then on, after doing that film, it was just film for me all the way. I absolutely love it. Every second, you really live and breathe the character. You get to, you get to play off so many different types of character, but in the same scene. When it cuts to an extreme close-up, you're not still really far away from someone. They can be right there, and you can really feel their emotions kind of right in your face as you're hitting them with yours. Everything about that experience is just magical, and it's just something else in acting. It really is. And that's, that's, that's what I prefer. Thank you very Good much. Who, was, who, who asked that? That's Carl. Carl. I like you, Carl. <laughs> that was my turn, okay. This is to everyone. Mm. If you could use one word to describe your character and stop eject, what would it be? And that's from Crystal Armitage. Mm. Sociably inept, but that's two words, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think she's very... a not a people person. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. No, I she always felt she, quite kind to... I think she was trying yeah, to be kind, but you know stern, like that auntie but who's a bit stern. Yeah. Loving, but in the tough, right heart tough and Tough right love. Place. That's two words again. Tough love with a kind of dashing, but can we can we stretch it to two words? I think so. Oh, they can't smelly. do anything. <laughs> so tough loved. Smelly. You're not having smelly. You're not smelly. <laughs> you smell lovely. What's yours? Um, One word. Is it loving? I think. Beautiful. Loving. Yeah. Be other than beautiful. beautiful. Loving. Clearly. <laughs> I've said perfect. I'm going to go with dead. Ah. Oh. Perfectly dead. Just dead. Oh. Was that how you describe your performance when you're actually oh. moving about? <laughs> 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 no, Thank I'm you. joking. Your eyes were alive. Both. Man. It's not my go anymore. It's yours. Oh my gosh. They keep coming. I think this is the last one. Oh, Just no. check the bag for me. I think it's a long one, so it could be here for a long time. Yeah. And this oh. one is from Ted Riley. Riley. Hi, Ted. Georgina, <clears throat> it's for you. How do you think the experience playing Mildred Hubble, the worst witch, of course, uh, series helped you prepare you to take on role of Kate in Stop and Inject? Do you believe that Mildred and Kate have any similarities in personality? Oh, that's, that's a good interesting question. question, isn't it? Um, do you know what? I, I really didn't think about whether they did because and actually I don't think I think they were quite different people um Mildred's a lot more like me because I was quite similar to Mildred I think in many ways but Kate Kate I actually had a very clear idea of someone in my mind who I modeled Kate afterwards after and she's not very like me uh, she's lovely but she's not very like me yeah. um so no no I don't but how did the experience prepare me um there's lots of magic going on in both um and you do you get used to sort of <laughs> staring at a tennis ball instead of a clock that's floating in the air and things like that. Um, I don't know um, how it prepared me particularly. I don't, I, I really try, I never try and compare the characters I'm playing too much. It's like you meet a new friend and you wouldn't automatically compare them to another friend that you have unless unless something strikes you. And I have to say with Kate and Mildred, they, they didn't. I, I quite consciously wanted Kate to be different. Um, 
and then the preparation it, it's just lovely having grown up on a film set that was that was a lovely preparation for like Ollie says it's an amazing place to be and it's an amazing type of acting um, and it was really nice um, the West Witch was wonderful but when you do films like Stop Eject and it's a small crew and a, a small group you have slightly longer to kind of um, really get into that role and stay in that role and, and that was lovely I think Good. Well, let's, let's, oh. we're just we just wanted just to say thank you thank to you. everybody yeah, you it makes a you. massive difference <coughs> having that support mm -hmm. and it's uh, amazing knowing that you're spending a day doing ADR because you guys have donated it's really nice mm. So thank you, we've had a great time. Thank you all very much. <laughs>